Good morning. How are you today? Well, if you can see the sky, it's a gray day and the uh, temperature is cold. So I guess uh, we got in a polar wind from the north so we can commiserate with our brothers and sisters elsewhere geographically around the globe. But uh, I still have a great feeling today and it's only uh, gotten better and it has to do with the trial in Minneapolis and uh, the conviction of uh, Chauvin. I thought uh, when I read the report that on Monday night the jury sat there, I don't know, fairly late, I thought it meant that they, they were working toward a conclusion and they wanted to finish it, but they didn't have the energy to do it Monday night. And so Tuesday they worked until they had it. They wrote no notes to the judge, meaning they didn't have questions about the evidence or about a hung jury. So I thought it was very likely that it was going to be a conviction. But guessing it and knowing it are two different things. The, the other thing about it was, uh, my next question was, will the judge have him step back, meaning immediately go into confinement? And I thought that he would do that. And if you think about it, a guy who's facing 40 years or more, uh, depending on how they handle the various penalties um, and the enhancement that was requested by the prosecution, that would encourage some people to get on a bus on, uh, on Saturday and uh, go to Cancun or some other place. Uh, he didn't have that opportunity. Uh, and when the, the verdict came in, maybe you felt the same way I did. We were all invested in this not just as a trial, not as a curiosity, but as its significance going forward to the nation. And I've been talking off and on about how I saw it as a pivot in which we either found our way onto a path of constructive engagement and improvement, possible improvement, or we were in the streets because there was a hung jury or an acquittal. And so when I was waiting, listening for the first verdict, and he said, guilty. I had such a combination of uh, <laughs> joy and weepiness that uh, there had been this, uh, been this conviction. And it didn't lessen when I heard the second one and when I heard the third one. And uh, I think there are rare times in public life when something seizes you like that, that you know it's good for the nation it's good for your value system. It's good for people that you've seen suffer, including the astonishing example of, of what happened to Floyd. And there, something is not enough. But when you consider Eric Garner, he never, no one was ever charged with any crime for what happened to him. And he was choked to death and it was taped and there were people all around, but it made no difference at all. And the worst that happened was years later, uh, the officer was fired, the principal officer. So uh, this was a big thing. And it, it was a big thing for so many reasons. Uh, it just caught the imagination, caught the soul and heart of America. When I was on the Hill, I had an experience like this when we were working the impeachment, defending against the impeachment of President Clinton. Yes, what he did was terrible, and uh, but it wasn't an impeachable offense. And I was sitting in the floor of the of the House when the vote was being taken to impeach or not, and I was sitting next to Maxine Waters. And uh, as the vote was going, I had this depression coming over me, and it was a similar depression that equates with the joy that I felt when we had the uh, guilty verdicts for uh, Chauvin. Now, he had this look of surprise on his face when the convictions came in. And I'm glad he had that belief system because otherwise he might have gotten on that bus and left America. But he didn't do that. He stayed there. And it's a little bit like uh, Nixon, I think. You know, Nixon thought he got caught in corruption because they changed the rules on him in midstream. Well, I think that uh, this guy Chauvin <clears throat> had a similar feeling. He felt that uh, I should be okay. You know, cops are always okay. 
because uh, discrimination is allowed. Now, when he got cuffed, the role reversal was a great dramatic equation to what he had done. Although he's not going to suffer in that instant what uh, George Floyd did. Not that we should do that. But he will spend many years having to meditate upon it. Um, now, as for those who say, okay, so this case, so what? Where is this path that I'm talking about? Well, last night in the state of uh, Minnesota, after the verdict, after uh, he, Chauvin was cuffed, uh, we had the attorney general of the state come out and speak about it. We had the governor of the state come out and speak about it. After that, we had the vice president of the United States come out and speak about it. We had the president of the United States come out and speak about it and what needs to be done. And that this is not the end of it. And we have to reform and advance and go further. We saw the family of uh, George Floyd celebrate the disaster that happened to their loved one that made this significant difference, this historic change uh, that's making possible other things. We have heard the Congressional Black Caucus and other members of the Congress talk about now moving the bill, the Floyd bill on the Hill. And this morning, uh, before I went out, the Attorney General of the United States was saying, this is not the end of it. We're not going to go into Minneapolis. We're going to go into Minnesota, into Minneapolis, and we're going to investigate, do a civil investigation of what's going on in that police force. So we've been proven right as a people to believe that this was more than just the trial of a killing. This was about our original promise that all people are created and will be treated equally. And we have, by fits and starts, perfected and failed that standard. But yesterday, in this trial of America, and not just that officer, and it was about police, despite what the summation said, and it was about racism, despite the fact the word wasn't mentioned. And I believe that we are very lucky that a lot of people, including police in that office, came forward to say, we are not him. That is not who we are. That is not what we do. And I think we've given strength to police across this country who feel that same way. So I'm off my soapbox <laughs> and I've warmed up a little bit more. So uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye-bye.